Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining the Bible class of the Church of Jesus Christ. We honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor our pastor, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. and Lady Louise Leslie. Our assistant pastor, Jessica to Robert Taylor and Sister Melinda Taylor. Our pastoral assistants, Evangelist Margaret Williams and Evangelist Doris Thompson. We'd like to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And now at this time, we ask that our Facebook audience, thank you for tuning in. We ask that you like, comment, and share. Go ahead and share this broadcast, share this stream so that we can get the word out. I heard somebody say, when you share, that's the arms and feet of Jesus. You're getting the word out. So let's go ahead and share. So let's get the word out, show some love. All right, now at this time, our pastor is going to come with the opening prayer and he will introduce our teacher. And then I'll come back to close it off with a few announcements. Then we'll turn it back over to Bishop Leslie for final remarks and benediction. Now let's receive our pastor, Bishop Leslie. Praise the Lord, everyone. Again, we're so glad for the opportunity he's given us to study his word. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so glad for the fellowship that we're about to have, and we thank you for your word that we are about to study. Help us, Lord, to esteem your word more highly than our necessary food. Help us to apply the word to our lives when the devil comes against us like a flood. My God, give us that insight to use the word of God to get the devil off of our case. Bless our teacher, my God, and give him exactly what we have need of and help us to hear so that our souls can live. We thank you for this. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And again, we're so glad for the fellowship that we're having around uh, the Bible class table. And we thank the Lord for our teacher, the district elder, Robert Taylor, the assistant pastor of the Church of Jesus Christ. My God, he's been teaching some mighty powerful word and we thank God for God's word and we esteem God's word more highly than our necessary food. If that's the case, then that means you are a lover of the word of God because you are a lover of greens and potatoes and cornbread. Praise him, that's the natural food. But the spiritual food is that which we are about to receive now. And we turn the class over to our assistant pastor, God bless you, our district elder Robert Taylor. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Thank you so much. Once again, we praise God for another day that he has blessed us. And, you know, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed and because his compassions fail or not, but they're new every morning. God is faithful. Hallelujah. I said, God is faithful. And I'm so glad that we serve a faithful God. He'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. He'll never let us down, but he'll keep us. Oh God, sometimes even when we don't, didn't want to be kept, he kept us. And I thank God for his faithfulness unto us. We do give honor to the spirit of Christ this evening. Amen. It's good to be back in church, isn't it? It's good to be back in church once again. And I'm not talking about the, the physical building. I'm talking about us, our gathering, our gathering together. We are the church. Amen. I told you, you ought to hit yourself on the chest sometime and just say, I am the church. If you have the spirit of God in you, if you have the spirit of God in you, then you are. You are a part of the body of Christ, which is the church of the living God. Amen. We do thank God for our bishop and pastor and to his companion, Bishop John T. Leslie and Lady Louise Leslie. We praise God for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, holding, holding on to the horns of the altar. Amen. Is where they're found, where we want to be found in Jesus' name. I want to invite your attention back to the book of Isaiah. We've been studying uh, and looking at uh, some significant uh, of, uh, principles and values that uh, pertain to the church and pertain to the children of God. And those are uh, the, uh, the power, the power of prayer, the power of fasting, the power of praise and worship. Uh, this is what we've been, uh, we've been dealing with and uh, we see the importance and how imperative it is for us uh, as children of God to be involved and have a consistent life of prayer. 
a uh, consistent life of fasting, a consistent life of giving God praise and worship. Uh, our, everything that we do for God, it should be, it has to be consistent. Uh, we don't want to have, have, you know, have do this and have do that because God, we serve a God that's, you know, he, he deserves to be glorified. He deserves, uh, he deserves praise and worship from the hearts and the lips of his people. And because of that, then let us do all that we can to give God just what he wants. Uh, because he deserves it. He is the God of all flesh. He's the father of all spirits. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. My God, he's sovereign. He doesn't ask anybody for anything. You know what? Even if God was hungry, he wouldn't even tell us. And then he says, a cattle on a thousand hills of mine. If I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. Look at the God that we serve. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so we've been studying, we've been looking at uh, these concepts, the power of prayer, fasting, praise, and worship. And, and here's that bottom line to this. Uh, this year, this year, we want to tap into God's unlimited resources. And what are his resources? Anything that we need from God. That's his resources. And one thing about his resources is that he never runs out. He never runs dry. I remember, I recall Bishop Bell making a statement one time. If you ask God for something and he doesn't have it, which we know that won't happen, he said, he, all he'll do is create it. And so he's never, he's never caught short. He's never without. God always has what we need and then some more. Uh, you know, and do, do you not know that God can service this entire universe and still have a still have a multitude of resources left? It never runs out. His resources are just as infinite as he is. Uh, we serve an infinite God. We've been looking at the 58th chapter of Isaiah. That's where we got our text from. Uh, this, this is where this subject matter originated from. <clears throat> Chapter 58, verse 9 and verse 14, verse 9 and verse 14. Uh, and we just want to read those two verses and move a little, little bit further. Verse 9 says, read along with me, if you will. It says, then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity. And so you see, we have to do some things. Uh, when we cry unto the Lord, God wants to hear us and he does hear us, uh, but he's asking us or rather implying that we do some things too. He wants us, he tells us, look at this. He says, uh, uh, if you take away from the midst of you, the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speak in vanity, you know, I, I, some of the things that we do and some of the things that we can say are not pleasing in the eyes of God. We're going to look at a little bit further in that tonight, too. Some of the things that we say and some of the things that we do are not always pleasing in, God, uh, in, in the eyes of God. You know, we might think it looks good. We might think it sounds good. But what does God think about it? And so he says, put it away from you. Put it away. And then verse number 14, look at what that says. He says, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And so based on and contingent to the fact that what if we would do what God says, you know, that's really a, uh, a conditional type of covenant uh, because a conditional covenant says, look, God says, if you do this, then I will do that. It's based on, it's a condition there. There's a contingency there. And God says, if you do this, God said, then, and then, that then is the, is the, is the, is the uh, line of demarcation. Then, if, it, if then is based, then God would do it based on what we do. And so there's a conditional covenant there that God makes with us. And if we would do the things that God asked us to do and imply that we should do, then God said, look, I'm going to bless you like you've never seen before. Hallelujah. How many of you need that kind of a blessing? Amen. Good to see my friend, Sister Betty Washington on Facebook tonight. I saw you chiming in, Sister Betty. Amen. I've been thinking about you and praying for you in Jesus' name. Uh, all right. So uh, those, are our, those these are our key verses. Oh, glory be to God. You know what? Shando. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Mm. 
Let's go back. Let's go back uh, and take a look at uh, chapter 55. So a couple of things I want to uh, that I mentioned last week that I want to go back to uh, in chapter 55 of Isaiah. Uh, you know, this this <laughs> this this entire book of Isaiah is so loaded with so many good principles and uh, concepts and precepts in it that uh, you know it's it's hard to it's hard to uh, really teach part of it without teaching part of of another part of this book, but uh, we're going to try to limit ourselves to just a little bit. Uh, in chapter fifty-five, we talked about, uh, and and I'm just want to I just want to look at a few verses there, beginning with verse number six. Uh, Isaiah says this. The Lord says this through the mouth of Isaiah. He says, "Seek ye the Lord while he may be found." Okay, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. And then he says, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly, abundantly pardon. Uh, I made mention of this last week and uh, it bears being repeated again this week and uh, one of my favorite authors is uh, is a man called Edward Bounds, Edward M. Bounds, E. M. Bounds, and he writes this in his book, uh, a little novel of his called "The Weapon of Prayer," the weapons of prayer, and he writes these words. He says, "Quote: In doing God's work, there is no substitute for praying. People of prayer cannot be replaced with other kinds of people. People of financial skill." people of education, people of worldly influence, none of these can possibly substitute for people of prayer. The life, the vigor, and the motive, power of God's work is formed by praying people. A listen to this, a diseased heart is not uh, a more fearful symptom of approaching death, then non-praying people are of a spiritual deterioration or wasting away. Isn't that something? A diseased heart doesn't even compare. It's not even, it's not even comp comparable to a non-praying individual, a non-praying child of God. In other words, God says, uh, if you're not praying as a child of God, then we are worse off than a diseased heart. Think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. If we're saved and sanctified and we're, and we're, we're not praying, we don't have a life of prayer, then we're worse off than a diseased heart. We don't even compare with the symptom or those symptoms don't even compare to us. And so that, 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 that regulates something in my mind. That tells me uh, if, if I don't hurry up and get a life of prayer, if I don't hurry up and, and begin to seek the Lord, then God is saying through this, through this man, E.M. Bounds, that uh, you're worse off than a diseased heart. It has a better chance of surviving than we who are not praying as we should. And it's not that we can't pray, it's that we choose not to pray. You, we do everything that we want to do. <laughs> you know, that's one, another one of Bishop Bill's uh, uh, quotes. Uh, people do what they want to do, but what they don't want to do, they find excuses. And excuses only satisfy the one that gives it. And so we do what we want to do. But we're living in a day and time now, and it's not just it's not just a day and time that has just come, even though the day and times are getting more intense than they have been in the past, for us anyway. But it has always been a time where people of God must pray because we are the ones, by praying people are the ones that changes situations and circumstances. Praying people are the ones 
who fulfill the purpose of God in the earth. You know, God knows, he knows we need a blessing. He knows that we need healing in our bodies. He knows that, uh, he knows how bad the, uh, our managers have been toward us. He knows all of this. He knows, he knows that, uh, and, and he, his desire is for us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prosper, but our soul can only prosper as our soul prays to the almighty God. And so he knows all about us. He knows our hurts. He knows our pains. He knows our faults. He knows how frail we are. But yet through all of that, God is yet looking for the people of God to fall into a posture of prayer. And so he says through the mouth of Isaiah, <clears throat> seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And now look at this. God knows. He knows how, uh, how uh, no matter how saved we may think we are in our own eyes, you know, and, and we, you know, and we, we, we think well of ourselves, don't we? And we should. But no matter how saved we think we are in our own eyes, we don't see, can't see through the eyes of God because God sees things in us that needs to be worked out of us. And, he, and even though we're in, we're in process of, we're progressing toward these things, there's yet a need for us to fall into a posture of prayer so that God can show us the things that are in us that need to come out and some things that are not in us that need to go in. He knows all about us. And so he says earlier uh, in verses four and five, it is, uh, that and verse, yeah, verse number four and five of chapter 55, that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are rather eight and nine. His ways and his thoughts are not our ways and thoughts. And because of that, uh, th this is why, and the reason why he wants us to seek him while he may be found. Seek him while there's still a promise of God to be found of us. We need to seek him and still, while the promise is still available for us to find him. And so he knows, he knows that uh, we're, we're not we're not perfect, and but he's trying to get us to a point of maturity. Because one thing about having a, you know, they say if you do anything for 21 days that you'll formulate a habit. I remember some years ago, uh, one of the sisters of our church said, you know what? She said, I've been praying for 21 days or more. And she said, now it's gotten easier to pray and it will get easier to pray. But you have to be consistent. You have to form that habit of prayer. And so he said, God says, your, my ways and my thoughts are not your, like yours. They don't even meet. And so here, uh, the only agent that God has for cleansing our thoughts and cleansing our ways is his word. We are clean through the word, which has been spoken unto us. And so that's why his ways and his thoughts are not on the same level as ours. They're not able to meet at all. But yet, if we would seek the Lord, if we would uh, apply his word to our lives, then we can conform to the image of God's dear son. Because our hearts and our minds, they can be renewed through the word of God. They can be transformed by seeking him. And then our thoughts and our ways will conform to God's will. And so, and our greatest desire, our greatest desire should be to live in complete conformity to the likeness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is... Uh, that, uh, that we do everything that we can to please the God that we serve. And so all of this, all of this, no matter uh, how much we work for the Lord, no matter how much we 
uh, say we do for the Lord. We can never be, we can never be uh, always on point with God if we don't have a life of prayer. I know you're probably tired of uh, hearing prayer being taught, but you know what? The more you hear, the more you ought to fall in love with it. Because I'm going to tell you, when you fall, when you begin to shando, he shamamamo, when you begin to fall in love with prayer, and you, you begin to feel the anointing of God in your prayer time, you don't want to leave that atmosphere. You want to stay there. You know, you, you're in your secret closet. You, you've, clo you've closed the door. And God has met you there. Just as he met Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. I don't know what your time is. I don't know what your prayer time is. Some love morning prayer. Some love afternoon prayer. Some love evening prayer. But whenever your prayer time is, David said, I, wanna, I want my voice to be heard on high in the morning. But I, there should be somebody, and there is somebody praying around the clock all over this globe. Children of God. People calling on the name of Jesus. Let our voice be one of those voices that are calling on the name of Jesus. And so our greatest desire should be to live in complete conformity to the will of God and to his son, Jesus Christ. And that we do everything that we can to please the God that we serve. Because it's so important. It's so important. You know, you know it, we, we haven't even talked about fasting yet. I, prayer is so important. Once we hook that thing up with fasting, Lord, have mercy. You talking about strike, you talking about lighting a fire in your spirit. It's going to light a fire in your spirit. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter number 29. Jeremiah was that weeping prophet that uh, whom they uh, likened Jesus to. And Jeremiah was one who uh, he prophesied uh, the Babylonian captivity to Judah, but, uh, but he thought God had fooled him. He thought God had, 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 had turned his back on him. And, and, you know, Jeremiah got so, he got so perturbed in his mind that he said, Lord, I'm not even going to speak in your name anymore. But he could not help himself because the word was in him like fire shut up in his bones. And he could not forbear. He couldn't help but talk about God. And Jeremiah was one who had a prayer life. Oh, that my head were a fountain of waters and my eyes were a fountain of tears. Then, then, would, then would I cry out unto the Lord. He's the one. He's the one whom God asked the question, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there not a physician there? Why then is the health of my people not recovered? And so God has everything that we need, but prayer will help us to tap into God's unlimited resources. It will help us. It will enable us. It will, it will make us capable of tapping into God's unlimited resources. Prayer will. You know, many, many times we, we, we say prayer would changes things. It changes things and it also changes people. Prayer would change you and me if we pray enough. Because it's, it's difficult to pray a lot. It's difficult to pray enough. It's difficult to seek God on a consistent basis and you not be changed. You'll find, you'll get a new perspective. You'll get another perspective. You start seeing God in a different way. You'll start seeing this this multicultural, multiplicity type of a God that we serve. He's not just one faceted. He, he, God is multi. Those that were standing before the throne in, in, in the book of Revelation, all kinds of kindred and tongues and nations standing in front of that throne, worshiping God. This God that we serve, he's a multicultural God, multilingual God. He, 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 can, he can visit each and every one of us at the same time. That's just how powerful and, and, how, omnis and how omniscient and omnipotent and 
um, omnipresent that he is. He's that kind of God. And so he does, look, if he cares about the sparrows that fall from the, to the earth, how much more does he care about us than he does sparrows? We who have been created and made in his image and after his likeness, how much more does he care about us? And so he wants us, he wants us as children of God to conform, to seek him, to, to do what we can do in order to get closer to the God that we serve. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 29, Jeremiah here, uh, verse number 10, for the, uh, thus said the Lord that after 70 years uh, be accomplished that God is going to visit them in Babylon. You know, God promised, uh, God promised Judah <clears throat> through the mouth of Jeremiah that, that, yeah, you're going down to Babylon for 70 years because uh, you were hard-headed. You didn't take, you didn't take note from your sister Israel. You know, you could have avoided it to some degree, but you, know, you, you didn't, you didn't. You, know, you just fell into your own bank and uh, fell into your own thing and you did what you wanted to do and you didn't hearken to my voice. And through the kings of Jehoiakim and, and Jehoshin and, and, and Zedekiah, uh, you know, they were hard-headed. They didn't follow, the, Zedekiah didn't follow his great-grandfather, Josiah. And Josiah, look at this, Josiah followed his great-grandfather, Hezekiah. His father, his grandfather, uh, between he, Josiah and Hezekiah, his father and grandfather, both of them did wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And so here between Josiah and the going down into Babylonian captivity, all of those kings that came after Josiah, they did wickedly in the eyes of the Lord and they would not listen to God. And so God said, I have no other choice, and I'm just paraphrasing, but to allow you, my word is out. You know, my word is out. And we looked at uh, Isaiah 55, where God says, look, but, but the word of the God my mouth goes out of my mouth and does not return to me void, but it accomplishes where I sent it. And it prospers in the thing that I please. And now, when my word goes out, I can't, br I can't bring it back. But it has to do what it said I was, it has to do what I told it to do. And again, because Judah would not listen. God, through the prophet Jeremiah, said, look, you're going down to Babylonian captivity, but after 70 years, I'm going to visit you. I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to bring you back into your homeland. I'm going to reestablish. Uh, I'm going to reestablish worship. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to rebuild the temple. We're going to rebuild the wall through Ezra, through Nehemiah. We're going to do all of that. Gonna bring you back where you can have your place of worship again. And so God, he tells them in verse number 11, he says, look, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. See, don't ever think that God does, is not concerned about us. Don't ever think that. He looks out for the best for, of our welfare. And nobody, nobody has has better benefits than the almighty God. His benefits are incredible. But he says to Judah here, and this can be applied to us as well. God, he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us. What does he say? He said thoughts of peace and not of evil. And he wants to accomplish something in this. He wants to give us an expected end. You know, what are you expecting from God? What is God expecting from you? What is he expecting from me? You know, I believe he wants the best for us. And we should want the best that God has. And so here he promises Israel or Judah that after 70 years be accomplished, that I'm going to visit you, I'm going to release you, and I'm going to give you an expectation. I'm going to give you an expectation. But at the same time, God expects his people to seek him and to realize the kind of love that he has for them, for us, 
is a love that is so immeasurable. It is so deep, it is so wide, it is so broad. And there's nothing that can compare with God's love for us. And because of that, that should, that should enable us, that should energize us to seek God. Who else loves you the way God loves you? You know, do you feel the love of God? Do you feel that love? When nothing else could help, the hymn said, love lifted me, sinking deep and sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more, but the master, Lord have mercy, of the sea heard something, y'all, he heard our despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me, lifted us. Now safe, now safe am I. It was love. God's unfailing love. His faithful love. His love lifted us. His love was is, is so immeasurable. You know, I remember uh, some years ago, Elder uh, Charles Bennett preached a message. God so loved the world. And he asked a question. He says, can anybody measure that word so? How deep is it? How wide is it? How broad is it? What's the depth of the love of God? Can you put it in an equation? When you put love there, you have to say love equals God. Because there's nothing else about the love of God that can be equated to it other than God himself. And the Bible tells us that God is love. And love is of God. And so Jeremiah, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. It bears being repeated that whatever you do during the course of your day, always take time out to pray. Always, always take time out to pray. Sometimes you might not be able to find time but as Bishop Lester told us years ago, you might not find time to serve God, but you got to take time. And you do. At times, you have to take time to serve God. You have to take time to pray. And so don't let your day go by, you know, without giving God some praise. And so uh, here in, in this book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, he says, uh, verse number 13, he says, and seek, and ye shall seek me when you pray unto me. God says, I'm going to hearken unto you. Then he says, you shall seek me and find me. You shall seek me and find me. When you search, when you shall search for me with all your heart. When you search for me with all your heart hard. Here in this scripture, there are, there are two principles that can be noted. Number one, when God desires to do great things for his people, he moves his people to great praying. In this passage, he's going to release the children of Judah at the end of 70 years. And so at, when God begins to move to fulfill his purpose and to fulfill his word with the children of Judah, what he does, he moves great people to great praying. He moves upon the people of God and they do great praying. In this case, who was it that prayed? It was the prophet Daniel. Remember Daniel chapter nine, I believe it is, is the book of Daniel. When Daniel saw by books <clears throat> that it was time for them to be released from Babylonian captivity, what did Daniel do? Daniel said, look, I sought the Lord. I got down in sackcloth and ashes and I sought God. Because Daniel knew that the 70 years was coming to an end or had ended. And so 
<laughs> Question. When God has made that kind of a promise and the time of that promise has come to fruition, shouldn't we notice it? Shouldn't we know this? Why is it that at times we don't notice these things? You know, I asked a question on, on, on several, uh, several Sunday mornings that, 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 we, that, we, that I preached is that, you know, with all of these prophets and prophetesses in the world that we have, all those that call themselves prophets and prophetesses, how is it that nobody saw the pandemic coming? If they saw it coming, it wasn't publicized. Did you hear about it from a prophet or from a prophetess? I mean, preachers have been preaching all the time that Jesus is coming. And we know this and we believe this. And we even, we even know that his, that his coming is near because of the signs that we see that pertain to his second coming. Not signs that pertain to his appearing or to the, the rapture of the church, but we see signs right now in our world that pertains to his second coming. And so if that being the case, how much nearer, Lord, have mercy, how much nearer is the rapture of the church if we're seeing second, second coming signs right now? Scripture is being fulfilled right now before our very eyes. And this is one reason, this should be even more of a reason, watch this, for us to seek the Lord while he can be found. Lord, have mercy. I don't know about you, but I feel the power of God right now. This, gives, this should give us more reason because we see these signs and we've been hearing about this and being preached to for years that the signs are prevalent right now. And so how much nearer is, this, is, is, the, is the rapture of the church? This should give us more reason to seek God while he can be found. This should give us more reason to get closer to the Lord, to give us more reason to say, Lord, look, look I, I, I may have been hair stepping in the past, but I'm, I'm getting it together. <laughs> you know, I'm getting it together. You know, that's, that's the way uh, <laughs> our parents, they used to tell us, that <laughs> they used to say, look, we'll let you slide this time, but don't let it happen again. And so how much more of a reason do we need to seek God even more than what we have in the past? You know, and, and, and things that are happening in our world today, we're just talking, you know, the pandemic is here. Uh, there's, they're talking about an invasion in the Ukraine would be worse off than uh, it, it'd be significant like World War III. You know, what are some of the things that are happening over where the fig tree is? That fig tree is Israel. Israel is an ally of the United States. You think they wouldn't be involved? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. But from this scripture in, in Jeremiah, there, there are two principles that can be noted from this scripture. Number one, when God desires to do great things for his people, and in this case, delivering them from Babylonian captivity, what he does, he moves upon his people to do great praying. Because somebody, somebody, as, as Daniel did, somebody got to acknowledge that, look, God is getting ready to move. God wants to release us. He wants to liberate us. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to, to prosper us and bless us. And so God moves upon people to do great praying. And great praying, great praying, great praying is, is just having that consistency. Having that mind to, 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 to really seek the Lord, praying without ceasing. And then the second principle that can be steered from this 
particular scripture is that the timing, of, the timing of God's answers to their prayers is often linked to God's purposes for his people as a whole. The timing, the timing, the timing of God, you know, uh, the timing uh, of God's answers to their prayers is often linked to God's purposes for his people as a whole. And so God says 70 years, 70 years. I'm going to release, I'm going to visit you when those years have been accomplished. And God did just that. But it took the prayer of Daniel to say, Lord, look, I know we're in a bad fix. As the old people say, y'all are in a pickle. I know we're in a pickle. I know we're in a bad fix. I know that we're down here, maybe because some of us didn't even do the things, but we're down here because we're related to those who were the cause of us being here. And Daniel said, we have sinned. Now, Daniel, uh, the Bible said that he had an excellent spirit. Daniel was one who sought the Lord on a daily basis. Prayed toward the east three times daily. But Daniel involved, included himself in the fact that we as a nation have sinned. You know what? We as the United States of America, we as a nation, we have sinned. We have turned our back on God. We don't want God in anything uh, that pertains to society. We don't want it as a nation. But we, as people of God, we must pray that, Lord, forgive us of these, uh, it, it, the, of these depra de de depra depravated things. Do you forgive us of these things? And, Lord, we know that as, as a nation, you, we might not look too pretty in your eyes. But, Lord, forgive us because we have, we're part of this nation. We have sinned. And we have come short of the glory of God. Is God hearing the prayers of his people? Is your voice one of the voices that are crying out to God, saying, Lord, forgive us in this nation? This nation is trying to desensitize the saints of God, trying to desensitize the word of God. but God will not negotiate anything with, this, with a nation. The only thing a nation can do is turn to the almighty God. And we, since we're here in this nation, then let us cry unto God in proxy for this nation. And so God, he says, uh, you know, to, to seek and to search for God with all your heart just simply means to keep an attitude of prayer. Keep an attitude of prayer. It means to pray without ceasing. Because remember, God, God needs praying people. He needs people who praise. Because his purposes are fulfilled in this world and fulfilled in this earth through the people that are praying, not through the ones that got a title on their name. Because you might have a title and don't have a prayer life. And so God is not fulfilling his purpose <laughs> through titles, but he's fulfilling them through people who are praying. You might consider yourself to be the Lord's on the totem pole but you love God and you love to pray. Well, in the eyes of God, you at the, you at the top of the pole as far as God is concerned. <laughs> and so it means to pray without ceasing. In other words, continue to abide in the presence of God, having a continual cry from the heart for his grace and for God's blessings. No, you're not walking around all day long with your head up in the air. You're not constantly on your knees when you're praying without ceasing. But you're keeping an attitude of prayer, praying as you go along your day, 
Pray about anything and everything. Seek, 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 seek the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways, in all of my ways. Acknowledge God, for he shall direct our path. And so we need to pray without ceasing. And without ceasing does not mean to be constantly uttering formal prayers either, but rather it implies a recurring prayer on all sorts of occasions throughout the day on specific requests. It's staying linked up to the throne room. You understand? Staying linked up to the throne room. And so, and this is how, this is how. This is the way we tap into God's unlimited resources. What do you need? What do I need from the Lord today? Have you sought the Lord? Have you, have you tapped into his resource? Have you been to the God bank? And I'm not talking about money bank. Have you been to the God? God has a bank that is full of resources. And whatever we need from God, whether it be peace, whether it be some long suffering, whether it be some love, you know, a lot of times we think about resources, we think about the natural stuff. But what about, what about the spiritual stuff? And I think once we get the spiritual stuff, the natural stuff does not look as significant as we thought it did. It doesn't, the natural stuff doesn't even have the same tone or the same value that we thought it did. That song that uh, Brother Philip played at the beginning of this uh, Bible class, I would rather have Jesus than silver and gold. You know, we sang that song years ago. You know, on a different, a different, different song, but same words. Some folk would rather have houses and land. Some choose silver and gold. But all I want is Jesus. I would rather have Jesus than all of the stuff in this world. Because he's more than all of the stuff in this world. And so I just want to encourage us as we move further into this year, seeing the climate of this world, how the atmosphere is so cloudy with so much unrighteousness and ungodliness. I just want to encourage us and appeal to us. And I'm talking to me, I'm talking to me too. But I just want to encourage us and appeal to us. Let us seek the Lord while he can be found and let us, by all means, tap into God's unlimited resources because he has a boatload of stuff. You know, some things we have, I, I believe there are some things that God has we haven't even touched yet. It hasn't even surfaced yet. But when we, from an individual standpoint and collectively as a, as a church, and then even more collectively as a body of Christ, as the body taps into God's unlimited resources, God will do exports amongst us. He'll bring about some changes, some things. Uh, he, he will offset the adversary. He will, <laughs> he will keep us from anything from entering us to harm us. He will set a garrison around us. As I believe that he's doing even right now. And so let us be watchful and let us be prayerful and let us be sober because the adversary, y'all, is going to and fro. And the adversary, you know, and the adversary, may not necessarily be Satan himself, but we know that he is the influence of all evil and all ungodliness. And we know he influences people in high places and all. 
And so let us be aware of these things. And if you see something, as the old cliche say, say something, but say it through prayer. Don't just verbalize it, but say it through prayer. And let us, let us, as a people of God, let us tap into God's unlimited resources. Because God wants, he's looking for praying people. He's looking for people who praise. And so let us be, let us be one of those people. Let us, let us, let, we're, we're the church, we're the body of Christ. And so let us do what our head did. Our head was a man of prayer. And so let his body follow suit with the head that has saved us and is keeping us. Building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so with that said, I'm going to stop right there for tonight. But, but, but we need to look at this and look at it more closely. Put it under your microscope. Because we have power in praying and in fasting and in praise and in worship. There's power there. And those are some things that we have the ability to do. So let us choose to do it so that God can get the glory out of our lives. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you once again for our time spent together tonight. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would uh, give us the strength. Lord God, give us, give us that mindset that we may uh, uh, tap into your resources, Lord, through prayer. Tap into it through fasting and, and praise and worship because you want to bless us. We know that you want to bless us. We know that you want to uh, fulfill your purpose in, in this world through us. Help us to be and to remain people of prayer. If you do this for us, we'd be ever grateful to give your name to praise. The honor and the glory is yours. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you until next week in Jesus' name. Brother Phil. Thank you, District Elder Taylor. Another powerful, my Lord, another powerful lesson. Thank you so much. And those on our Facebook audience, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. God willing, we'll see you next week, same time, same location. God bless you and we love you. All right, we'd like to thank all of our healthcare workers, first responders and essential workers. Thank you for all of the work that you're doing. Please stay safe. Join us tomorrow morning for early morning prayer with the PCAFI from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. The call-in number is 844-992-4726. The access code is 132-913-0943. All right, this Thursday, Thursday this week, we will start the virtual winter conference of the Eastern and Southern States Council. My Lord, we're going to have a good time. Now, it starts this Thursday, and it's virtual. So anytime we have anything virtual with our council, with our organization, all Church of Jesus Christ events are shut down, so we will have not have prayer Thursday because we'll be virtually at the council the winter conference amen so our theme is kingdom shift stay in focus and it's thursday january 27th through saturday january 29th now to participate during the daytime sessions you must go to the website to register the website is esscpcaf.org go to the website to register you'll get all of the information concerning the daytime sessions You'll be able to tune into the Bible classes, tune into the seminars. We're going to have some dynamite seminars, two of which will be taught by uh, our very own deacon, uh, Stephen Leslie and evangelist Alice Howard. We're going to have some, it's going to be great. So you don't want to miss anything. Our evening speakers, Thursday will be evangelist Kathy Leonard, preaching woman of God. Friday evening will be uh, Apostle Willard Saunders, a preaching man of God. And the young people are going to close it out Saturday with another preaching, unorthodox preacher, Pastor Aaron Hanna Sr. You don't want to miss this. We're going to have a great time. The evening services will be streamed online at Facebook, and YouTube on the Eastern and Southern States site, Facebook and YouTube, the evening service. And if you, the daytime sessions, you have to, must register, ESSCPCAF.org. 
You can get the information about the daytime sessions. It's going to be fantastic. You don't want to miss it. Register tonight if you hadn't registered already. Register tonight so you won't miss anything. All right. And then Sunday, uh, join us for our virtual morning worship service at 8 a.m. Uh, streaming on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. And at 1030, we have our Sunday school using the same meeting code, access code, and telephone number that you use for this session. And you'll be able to watch the broadcast again uh, for the 1130 on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. All right. Also on Sunday, we have Sunday school for the uh, ages 2 to 5, 1030 a.m. So Sunday school for ages 2 to 5 for, be this Sunday for ages 2 to 5 this Sunday, 1030 a.m. All right. Future announcement. Uh, the Daughters of Zion will present a book club. All right. It will be Saturday, February 5th at 9 a.m. All right. The theme is uh, the Valentine's Day Tea Party. All right. And the book that they will be discussing will be Lord, This Heart of Mine. The author is Bishop Clifton Jones. And you must get your book. You go to the website, www.avoicecrying.com. All right. It's going to be great. So they're going to be discussing this book. Saturday, February 5th at 9 p.m. All right, the meeting code is 867-1894-1138. And the access code is 808918. This is for the Daughters of Zion. This will be the women's ministry, all right? Thank you for all of your support. We are receiving your support. Those that are giving online at cojc.org, those that are using the Giveify app, those that are mailing it in, and those that are dropping it off. Thank you for your continued support. Now let's stay connected by all means. Like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, COJC underscore DC, Facebook, COJC Wash DC, YouTube, COJC Multimedia, our website, of course, COJC.org, our radio broadcast every Saturday, 1340 WICB, even during the council. <laughs> our broadcast is still going to go forth on WICB. 1340 on your AM dial. Our pastor is preaching and teaching the word of God. These are your announcements. God bless you all. I love you all. Now let's receive our pastor, Bishop Leslie. Powerful teaching, this together. My God, powerful teaching. This is a powerful lesson series that really all of us need to just zero in and embrace it because this word is talking to us. Yeah. What really sets my soul on fire was when you studied the life of Jesus Christ, praise Lord, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is one thing you'll find out that Jesus, who is the son of God, Jesus was a praying man. Jesus was a praying man. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> Jesus was a praying man. And you know who Jesus is? Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. So he was addressing the need of his flesh. He was already God, but he was also a human being. And he showed us what human beings must embrace. And that is a life of prayer. It wasn't anything for Jesus. After he ate at the table of Mary and Martha and Lazarus and wiped his mouth, Praise him. And he left out of the house and Jesus went straight to the mountain. My God, and Jesus prayed all night long. Jesus is God, people, but Jesus prays. We're not God. <laughs> we're God's children, but we're not God. But Jesus has given us a perfect example of what it means to live a righteous life and a holy life. You've got to be a praying person. Everybody from the pulpit to the door. God wants us to be praying people. Praise him. This is very a very serious series uh, that this young Taylor is teaching. Praise him. Tapping unlimited sources. When you learn how to pray, you tap into unlimited uh, sources. Praise him, and that's when you get prayers answered. That's when you get the devil off of your case. We got to have some power to get the devil off of our case. 
Somebody ought to shake their head and say, bro, you're talking. Praise him. And this is so very, very important. Keep on teaching this girl, Taylor. The Lord got you in his hands and he got you in the kingdom for such a time as this. And don't just be hearers of the word. The Bible teaches us to put God's word in practice. Everybody in the church of Jesus Christ ought to be a praying person. We got all kinds of prayer features. Uh, we have prayer opportunities. Praise him. Don't start me to naming them. But everybody is, to, is supposed to be a praying person. The Lord put you in the church that is a praying church. And I thank God for being a part of this church. <laughs> but everybody must be praying people. Because when the enemy comes against us like a flood, the devil is out to kill still and destroy us. And if we don't have a life of prayer, the devil will win. My God, and he'll conquer us. But if we have a praying spirit, when the enemy comes against us like a flood, my God, we can let that devil know. And Jesus gave the example of how to do it because he, when the enemy came against him like a flood, Jesus said, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. Praise him. He put that devil out of business. That's the kind of power that you have when you get the Holy Ghost. I done got happy. Praise him. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, this Yellow, for that powerful, uh, that powerful word in your own series. And just hang with the series just like you're doing. Praise him because we need what the Lord is giving you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. We are praying for uh, our Sister Melinda Taylor, she lost her mother, and we're praying for uh, her and all of the family, and then we are holding her in, in prayer. Praise him. When you lose your mother, uh, that goes real deep down into your spirit. So let us pray for uh, Sister Melinda Taylor and family uh, that is going to have to eulogize her mother. All right. I think that's all that I want to cover. Praise him. The Lord is good and he's gracious. And the Lord knows exactly what we have need of. And listen, encourage people that uh, are part of your family to listen to our broadcast on Saturday. Uh, the, the Lord has blessed us to be on the radio. And we're covering a whole lot of stuff that we've been preaching down through the years. And a lot of people would, if they have salvation on their mind, if they zero in on uh, the broadcast, uh, that might help them to make the choice to make Jesus their choice. So encourage the members of your family to listen to the broadcast on Saturday at 2.30, or at 1.30. God bless you. God bless you. All right, that be all. Let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the powerful word you've given out this together, Taylor, to teach. My God, we ask you, Lord, let us not to just to be hearers of your word, but help us to apply your word to our lives. So when the enemy comes against us like a flood, and we have found out that the enemy does not love us, and the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But, oh, God, thank you so much for the power of the Holy Ghost, because in you, my God, the power of God, live, move, and have its being. And when the enemy comes against us like a flood, we lift up the standard against the enemy and put him behind us. Bless us, Lord, and let us be blessed to be. Keep us healed. My God, keep our minds focused on you. My God, comfort the bereavement of those that have lost their loved ones. And I'm asking you, Lord, to bless everyone that's in this, uh, on this line, and let us be blessed to be, we ask you to do this for us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen.